Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I uh, welcome you to this uh, midweek Bible study. We're continuing our study of the letter to the Philippians written uh, by Paul and Timothy. Today we're going to look at verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. So I'm going to read out of the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Your version will be similar. For God is my witness, how I deeply miss all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And I pray this, that your love will keep on growing in knowledge and every kind of discernment so that you can determine what really matters and can be pure and blameless in the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. So Paul had told them earlier in this passage, he said in verse 3 of chapter 1, I give thanks to my God for every remembrance of you, always praying with joy for all of you in my every prayer. So he'd been praying for them, telling them he was praying for them. But now he gets specific. He, he's he's going to tell them what he's been praying for. Paul really did believe in the power of prayer to God. In chapter 4, in verse 6, he says, Don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So Paul is letting them know of his affection for them, how much he appreciates them, how much he loves them, but he's also wanting them to know that they're on his heart as he prays for them to God. He's praying to God that that uh, God will bless them and protect them. But he he's got some specific things, and and the focus of his prayer then is that they will come to understand what really matters. That's his prayer for these believers. And so here here's what he says: I pray this that your love will keep on growing in knowledge and every kind of discernment. Love. What Paul is talking about here is not their love for him, and it's not just an emotional um, feeling that he has for them or they for him. He's talking about the love of God, that their love, the love that flows through them from God. Uh, John wrote in 1 John extensively about the love of God. And, and here's, what, here's what he says in chapter 4 of 1 John. And I'm going to read verses 7 down through uh, verse 16. Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists of this. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. In other words, he paid the price for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. If if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is perfected in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given to he has given to us from his spirit. And we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent the Son as a savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. 
And we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. And then he goes on in verse 19 and says, We love because God first loved us. So what Paul's praying for here in in this prayer for the Philippians, it's also a prayer for all believers that the love they have, not just this, it's not a phileo love. It's it's phileo love means a friendly or um, you know a family love. It's a, a more of a casual love. This is agape. This is the love of God that is expressed in what God has done for us through Jesus. And so he's praying that, that that love, that love of God for us and that's in us through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit will grow. He says that your love, the love that that they have that has come from knowing Jesus and letting Jesus live in us will continue to who will keep on growing. And, and how would it grow? It would grow in, in knowledge. And it's, it's an interesting word that he uses here. The, the Greek word for knowledge, just knowledge, is the word gnosis. Gnosis. G-N-O-S-I is gnosis. And it, it, it can mean, it means factual knowledge. But here, he uses, he puts a preposition on the front of it. It's, it's called epigenosis. It means full knowledge, complete knowledge. So he's praying that they will not just grow in factual knowledge about the Bible, uh, even about um, the, the teachings of Jesus. It isn't just knowing facts. It's, it's having those be part of who you are. And it comes from knowing the word, but it has it comes from having the Holy Spirit confirm and convict you of the truth of the word. That's what this full knowledge what he, that, that he's talking about, that we will grow in our conviction and that we are convinced that the word of God is true and that it impacts our lives. And so what this knowledge does then, it goes on to say, we'll keep on growing. It will, this is a continual process. We don't ever, we don't ever arrive. We're always learning more and more about God. But we'll, we'll learn this full knowledge and every kind of discernment. So this knowledge then, this conviction that the word of God is true and it impacts how we think, how we make decisions, how we treat people, our worldview, uh, then the, the result of that is a spiritual discernment of how to live. It's an understanding of biblical truth that's revealed through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in us. It is the, it, it is, it is rightly and correctly applying biblical knowledge to the way we live that results in holy living. And here's what he says that once as, as people ex, experience the love of God and allow the love of God to live through them, Christ, uh, Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by his power and his strength. That's what he's talking about here. And when that happens and you are growing in knowledge and the ability to discern truth and apply it to your lives, he says so that you can determine what really matters and can be pure and blameless in the day of Christ. That's holy living. That's what he's talking about. That this, the love of God will, will help you understand how to live the life of Christ. You'll discern how to apply the truth 
to daily living and how you treat people, how you go about making decisions, how you handle money, how you do family, you know, uh, just everything about your life, really. And the result of that is holy living, that you will be pure and blameless before the Lord because you are in the Lord. It's not, it's not of your own works or goodness. It's because you, you and I are in Christ. So he goes on to say that, that you will be filled with the fruit of righteousness. Now, this righteousness comes from having the mind of Christ. He talks about that. Paul talks about that throughout his writings. But he says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, and we're, we're going to get to this great passage in a few weeks. But he says, have this mind in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That's what he's talking about here. Growing in love and knowledge. The, having the mind of Christ. As we follow Jesus, we begin to live like Christ, think like Christ, act like Christ, treat people like Christ. That's what he's talking about. That's the knowledge and the discernment of how to apply that knowledge to the various situations that we uh, find ourselves in life. And so his, he said the result then, as you grow in love, and the knowledge and the discernment of, of the truth that Jesus brings, he says, then you will then be able to discern, he says, so that you can determine, the word determine is the same word here you he use, it's, it means to discern or to, to be able to, um, um, to apply uh, what and, and to to be able to act on what really matters. And that's what he's talking about. The essential things of life, the best things. You know, we do a lot of good things, but at the sake sometimes of the best thing. And here's what he's talking about, that he's praying that these believers in Philippi, and of course it, it applies to us in, in this day, is that we will be able to understand the word of God the teachings of Jesus, apply those to our lives, that they will become a, a part of who we are and they will help us determine what really matters. And as we focus on the things that really matter, it will change our lives. Here what, here's what Paul says toward the end of his letter that kind of summarizes um, what he's saying here. Finally, brothers, he's saying, this is chapter four and verse eight of Philippians. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there's any moral excellence, the same word here is used of what really matters. It's the same word. If there's any moral excellence, and if there's any praise, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. That's his prayer. That's what this prayer is all about, is for the God of peace. I know that you've been praying for and concerned about what's going on in Israel and Gaza. And I encourage you daily to pray for peace in Israel and Gaza. Awful, just evil, just raw evil of what we've seen happen. It's the total antithesis of what Paul's talking about hear about the love of Christ, the love of God that's expressed in Jesus. So let's covenant together that we're going to pray for peace, for the, the, the warring to stop, and for people in that part of the world to turn to the Lord God. I look forward to the time next week, and I also look forward to seeing you uh, Sunday morning as we continue our study of the of the book of acts the marks of a healthy church 
but I encourage you to continue to read the book of Philippians. We're going to look uh, next Wednesday at, uh, at verses 12 uh, through 20 of Philippians chapter 1. So God bless you. Uh, have a good rest of your day.